Welcome back to Possible Audio. I hope everyone had a really good Thanksgiving and got stuffed out on all the turkey and mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, pecan pie, all that stuff. Uh, you know what? I have been stuffed now for like two days because everybody's shoving leftovers at me and I'm, I'm like, I'm drowning in food. <laughs> okay, so listen, I'm glad you're here. I hope you had an awesome Thanksgiving. And um, this video, we are doing the rebuild of the Marantz 1060's power amplifier board. And this board has got about 100 parts on it. And I decided to do a full resistor replace. And this is actually, keep in mind, this is part one, okay? There's gonna be two parts to this one because the video is getting kind of long. So I decided to break it up in two segments. And uh, this is segment one. And, and let's get to the video. Hey everyone, welcome back. Well, this is the part of the project I've been looking forward to getting to the most, and that's the amplifier board. And that's because this board has got a lot of problems. Somebody's worked on it, and there's a lot of work that's just not very good. Also, we're going to replace these three cans. This right. can is your standard power can, but these two cans right here need to be a high quality audio grade style can. Okay. And that's because these two cans are, they're directly coupled to the speaker. Okay. And the circuit. So whatever you get for these two is going to be reflective in the sound. So remember, these two need to be a high quality audio grade type capacitor okay so let's flip this thing over and take a look this is the bottom side and it's what i'm seeing is the main power cap right here i don't think this cap has ever been tampered with i believe this is all factory soldered as well as our main coupling caps um, but if you look over here, somebody has desoldered these wires before and had this whole module out. So the direction I'm going to go in with this is I'm going to either desolder these or snip them. And, um, that way we can get this module out and start making a parts list for it. And we'll go ahead and order our, uh, large cans here and this real big one for the power the sound on this sounds pretty good out of the left channel but the right channel is extremely weak anyways let's start with undoing these wires and be sure to take plenty of pictures videos whatever you've got to do so when you put all these wires back you're going to know where they go so okay just a quick shot to show you i've desoldered the uh wires running underneath you look down here there's a black wire that runs from somewhere and it connects on the board you can see it right down there in the center so let me desolder that wire all right i've got that one i'm done and this one here it's undone so now We've got to take out this screw down here and this one here. And then on the other side, down under those wires, down there, you'll have the two same screws. See right down there, you can see one of them. So just work those wires to the side to get to the Phillips and take those two out. Okay, I got the screws out, those two. And I have to kind of move the wires around to get them to, but they're out. This doesn't make a solid loop. You can actually bend it, and it's got an opening, so those wires will actually, um, they will actually move out of place. I don't know if you can see down there, but let me try to set the camera right here. There we go. Let me get my screwdriver down here and see how... See, this right here 
see how that'll bend out and then the wires will drop down. And okay. See how I moved the wires out of the loop? Okay. Now I'm going to pull up this side first and it should, it should come out. Oh yeah. Well, it's hanging on a wire. Oh, come on. <laughs> the yellow wire is like hanging on. Okay, let me get that out of the way. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Just like pulling a 454 out of a 1957 Chevrolet. Okay. All right, this is what we got. Not only has it been recapped, but um, this transistor, that transistor has been replaced as well as this one and this one. These two are original. Um, this resistor has been replaced. That resistor has been replaced. This one's been replaced. These wires running down to this heat sink, I thought that was part of the hackery, but this is actually a, um, it came out as a service bulletin. There was a, there was eventually just a varistor that went straight across right here. And I guess it would sense the heat rising, but then later they went to this and directly attached it to this, uh, snowflake heat sink. And then they put out a service bulletin on, uh, doing this, uh, modification. Yeah, we got a lot going on here and, uh, somebody's replaced that. There's a high failure rate down here in this area around these heat sinks. So it just, there's a little burnage on the board right there. You can barely see it. So that and right there, the previous one, it got hot and let out a little. That one there, it doesn't look very happy. We're going to put new potentiometers in. We're going to replace all these. Pull the heat sinks off so I get a little better view. Oh my gosh. I mean, look at the amount of glue. Let's see what my little helper thinks about all this. So this is the output amplifier itself. And we gotta separate this heat sink from the board. And I'm gonna start with removing the output transistors, which is this one, this one, this one, and that one. Simply take out these Phillips screws and use a needle on those pliers. You just pull straight up. After you remove all the output transistors and the um, sheets of mica, you're gonna take out this screw and this screw, and there's a little bracket let me show you right here on the back side that little bracket and that bracket you're going to capture those and be very careful with these wires right here okay and if they break there's not replacements available so just take your time and be, be and be very careful all right now i'm going to very carefully remove that phillips this phillips this one and this one and that'll separate the board from this heat sink. And when I separate it, I gotta be very careful to see these are sockets. See right back down here? This is a socket for the output um, transistor that we just removed. And just make sure that that's not wedged into the heat sink when you go to separate this board, okay? Okay, after you get all those removed, this should separate just like that. Let me show you. Now we can get to the back of the board and start removing our parts. Again, be very careful with these wires right here, okay? So this is what we got. Um, I was very gentle about bending these leads to get the wires out of the way. 
but the board has got flux all over it. And I'm gonna clean it up with some 99% isopropyl alcohol and a paintbrush and paper towels. Some of it's not bad, but some of it is um, not all that good either. So, but there's no telling, you know, how many people have worked on this board in the past. And, uh, but we're going to go through it and we're going to do our best. So, um, a lot of glue. Woo, there's a lot of glue. Let's see if I can get the light to hit it so you can see. See all that glue? Wow. I checked all the resistors on the board and this is what I came up with. Um, there's a few discrepancies in the service manual uh, concerning the values on a couple of, on three of the parts. And then R756 and R758 are labeled backwards on the board, according to the service manual. So those are swapped in the service manual. Um, everything looked pretty good. R734 has been replaced by a previous technician and it's, he put in a 221 ohm and it should be a 470. Um, what else was there? And there was a R756, which is slightly out of tolerance, but really the rest checked out okay. And, um, but I'm going to go ahead and do a full, uh, resistor replace. And this board ought to be running for a very long time. I'm just I'm just removing all of the excessive solder off the pads on the back. And I've done this side. This side over here I have not done. And some people would just leave this or whatever. But I'm going to remove all this excessive solder. And then after I'm done doing that, then I'll clean the board with um, alcohol and, and I will clean off all the glue with um, isotone. Let me bring you in for a closer look. If you see any damage or anything that I need to know about, just let me know because I'm still learning all this stuff. But I think this board's okay. It's my old friend, clean strip with a K, acetone. So I'm removing the glue on the board, and I've got most of it off of the, well, it's flipped, so this would be the left channel. Still got some around that one. But I got most of it off this side, and look at this side over here. I haven't touched this side of the board. It is a bear to get that stuff off. All right, I'm, I'm beginning to put the transistors back into the board, and I wanted to stand them off the board just a little bit. I didn't want them touching directly. And I did try a piece of a popsicle stick, and that got them about probably two millimeters off the board, which is pretty good, but I thought it was a little high. So I dug around, and I found my expired um, Dallas Museum of Art membership card. <laughs> and I cut a sliver off of it, and that was perfect. This is about a millimeter thick. See, it's about one millimeter thick. And that was perfect. That gets the um, resistors off the board just slightly. You probably noticed in that last shot that I had this resistor in the wrong place. It was supposed to be here, and I had it up here going across this way. So I fixed that. 
and um, it's easy to make a mistake. I got all the resistors in place. And all these blue ones are Vache Professional Series, and they're all 1%. And then I got um, Vache Dells right here. See these shiny brown ones? Those. And these have like a flame-proof coating. These, these are really heavy-duty ones right here. Those are like an industrial grade. So, um, yeah, I went all out on this board. And I would have liked to have gotten more of these for, you know, these heavy-duty ones for... Uh, like R738 and so on around these um, where the heat sinks are, but they didn't have them in the value I needed. So, I, you know, you got to take what's there. But in the end, even if they had nothing but these uh, Vache Professional Series, that's way better than what was in this board originally. Something that's been bothering me the whole time I've been working on this board are these two tan ones. They're so crooked. I mean, they just kind of... Let me straighten those up. Definitely better than it was. Not perfect, but we can live with that. All right. Tonight... I'm going to put in this R748 and R750, R749, R747. And I'm going to use these right here. These are, um, they look like huge resistors. Well, hey, it is a huge resistor. What am I saying? All right, I got the large resistors in place but they really tripped me up and that is because in the board the spacing for the mounting holes are different widths for each one i don't know but it, it made it so in the beginning i'm like measuring one i'm going okay they're all the same and then when i start putting them in i realize you know a few millimeters difference in length from each other. So um, I suggest that you make up one individually, install it, and then move to the next one and make it, make the length for it correct, then install it, and so on and so forth. Shatosky, how do you say it? Shot, Shotsky? Shotsky diodes? Anyways, um, that is this blue one here and here. And here, and there. If you notice, there's a stripe on it, and underneath it, you can see the board is labeled with a with a line. Um, so you want to get these in the correct direction, or you're going to have problems. So just make sure that line is facing the right way, okay? And another thing is, um, the outer, the outer ones. This one here. And the outer one here are the same size, but they're a little bit shorter than these in the center, than this one and this one. So you're going to have to pay attention that there are two different sizes. These are, the lead spacing is a little wider. These are a little bit more narrow. So just be sure to take note of that when you're uh, installing those. But it's turning out good. These are the caps we're going to use. Um, these are Nichicon uh, Super Through caps. They're 4,700 microfarads at 63 volts. It was recommended to me to use something like this, a good high quality audio grade cap, because these caps are directly in the signal path. And um, it's just important to use a good high quality audio grade cap for that purpose. And this is our main filtering cap. And this is a I believe it's LNT, is the Nichicon uh, series. And this cap here has got screw terminals. It's just a really nice, high-end, heavy-duty cap. So that's what we're going to be using. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And um, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all next week.